This next section talks about major minerals and bone health. So we know that bones are the hardest, strongest structures in the human body. They support our weight, whether we're stepping off a curb or jumping rope. Age, however, um, causes loss of bone strength. And for many people, the loss is so great that the force of stepping up a curb is enough to cause the bones to fracture. Um, we know that bone is strong because it is composed of a protein framework, a matrix that's hardened by deposits of minerals. And this matrix, matrix consists primarily of the protein collagen. The mineral portion of the bone is composed mainly of calcium associated um, with phosphorus, but it also contains magnesium, sodium, fluoride, and a number of other minerals. Uh, we do know that healthy bones require adequate dietary protein and vitamin C to maintain the collagen and a sufficient supply of calcium and other minerals to ensure solidity. Uh, adequate vitamin D, and we talked about that in chapter 7, is needed to maintain appropriate levels of calcium and phosphorus. And then there is growing evidence of the importance of vitamin K for bone, bone health. So bones and health and disease, we know that um, bones are living t tissues and they support weight and participate in movement. And they're constantly being broken down and reformed during bone remodeling. Um, uh, like other tissues in the body, bone is alive and um, the bone remodeling process is uh, continuous and this bone reformation allows for growth and maintenance. We know that most bone is formed in early life. During childhood, bones grow larger. Even after growth stops, um, our bone mass continues to increase into young adulthood. The maximum amount of bone that you have in your lifetime, called your peak bone mass, is achieved somewhere between ages 16 and 30. Uh, up to this point, bone formation occurs more rapidly than breakdown, so the total amount of bone increases. But after about age 35 to 45, the amount of bone that is broken down begins to exceed the amount that is formed, so total bone mass decreases. Over time, if enough bone is lost, the skeleton is weakened, and fractures uh, occur more easily, and this condition is referred to as osteoporosis, and that's where more bone loss than formation results in fractures. Uh, this diagram is uh, visual um, on the right. You see normal bone, and then the bone weakened by oste osteoporosis, and then on the left, we see the changes in the balance between bone formation and bone breakdown caused by bone mass to increase in children and adolescents. We see our increased bone mass and decrease in adults as they grow older. Um, this graph um, shows uh, when we can buy osteoporosis, the front edge of the vertebrae collapse more than the back edge, so the spine bends forward. Um, and here, the spinal compression fractures shown here are common and may result in loss of height and astute posture um, called a doagger's hump. So a little more, more about um, uh, factors affecting the risk of osteoporosis. The risk of developing osteoporosis depends on the level of peak bone mass and the rate in which bone is lost. So these varial variables are affected by genetics, gender, age, hormone levels, and lifestyle factors such as smoking, alcohol consumption, exercise, and diet. Um, what we do know is women have a higher risk of osteoporosis because they have less bone than men and lose it faster as they age. And age-related bone loss incurs in both men and women, but women lose additional bone for a period of about five to 10 years surrounding menopause. And this postmenopausal bone loss is related to the dec declines in estrogen levels, 
which increases calcium release from the bone and decreases the amount of calcium absorbed in the intestine. And a low calcium intake really is the most significant dietary factor contributing to osteoporosis. Um, and here it just reviews the risk factors that we talked about. And, you know, there's a lot of controversy, and I'm a big proponent of this, of soda versus milk. We can see that um, carbonated beverages have replaced um, more nutritious beverages like milk, milk in our diet. Um, and we know that um, this has caused a decrease in um, our protein, calcium, vitamin A, vitamin D, and riboflavin intake. And because of this, um, where children and adolescents who are consuming large amounts of this, um, we're seeing uh, that the major sources of calcium in the U.S. diet are being reduced. And uh, this is because it's being replaced by soda um, for boys and girls. And osteoporosis is a major problem among older adults today. And when these adults were children, they drank twice, you know, the older adults today, when they were children, they drank twice as much as kids do today. So what will happen to these kids as they age in the future? Will we see osteoporosis at an earlier age? Calcium, um, we know that 99% of calcium is found in our bones and teeth. And in most body cells and fluid, um, fluid, uh, Fluids, it's needed for muscle contraction, neurotransmitter release, blood pressure regulation, cell communication, blood clotting. Um, it's regulated by hormones in the body. If it's too high, calcitonin reduces it or tones it down. Calcitonin and too low, um, PTH and calcitrol try to bring it up. And so here we see that low blood calcium triggers the secretion of um, PTH, uh, which is parathyroid hormone, and from the parathyroid gland, and PTH stimulates the re release of calcium from the bone and causes the kidneys to reduce calcium losses in the urine and to activate vitamin D. The activated vitamin D increases the absorption of calcium from the GI tract and acts with PTH um, to stimulate calcium release from the bone, and the overall effect of PTH is to rapidly restore blood calcium levels to normal. Um, so uh, what are the recommendations uh, for calcium intake uh, for the RDA for 19 to 15 year olds is 1,000 milligrams a day. The upper limits are 2,500 milligrams a day. And we get mainly our sources of calcium come from dairy products, dark green vegetables, fish with bones, food that are processed and fortified with calcium. Deficiency causes osteoporosis. And excesses can be caused, um, can identify people who have cancers, increased parathyroid hormone, um, excessive um, supplementation or altered availability, um, uh, constipation, loss of ap appetite can occur, abnormal heartbeat. So too much calcium can cause issues that we see here. Calcium sources, and that's reviewed again. Um, calcium supplements, how do you choose? If you're not getting enough calcium from foods, a supplement that contains a calcium compound alone or calcium with vitamin D can help you meet your calcium needs. Uh, usually a multivitamin, multimineral supplement with vitamin D can help meet your calcium needs. Um, and uh, But the supplements provide um, only a, a small amount of the calcium that you need. So you, you have to make sure in this one, it's only um, providing 500 milligrams. Um, some antacids are sources of calcium. Um, and there are over counter the medications that carry it. So you can just read the labels and see where you should be. Um, phosphorus, most is found with calcium in the bones and teeth. In the soft tissues, it's needed for phospholipids, DNA, RNA, and ATP structures, enzyme activity regulation, and cellular acidity maintenance. Um, and here's a diagram showing that most of the phosphorus in the body 
helps form the structure of bones and teeth, but phosphorus also plays an important role in the pulse host of uh, cellular, other cellular activities. Um, how do we meet the needs? The RDA for phosphorus is 700 milligrams a day for adults. Most diets provide this amount. Dairy products like milk, yogurt, and cheese, as well as meat, cereals, bran, eggs, nuts, and fish are good sources of phosphorus. And food additives used in baking goods, cheese, processed meats, and soft drinks also provide phosphorus. Uh, deficiencies are rare. Um, it can be due to chronic diarrhea, poor absorption, or um, overuse of an aluminum containing acids causing bone loss, weakness, and loss, loss of appetite. Um, we do know that excessive so uh, soda intake can cause poor calcium absorption, so uh, because the phosphorus um, in excess can reduce that calcium absorption as well. Excess high dietary phosphorus doesn't very be harmful, um, but with certain sodas, it can reduce the bioavailability of calcium. Magnesium um, in health and disease is 50 to 60 percent of it's in our bones, in our cells and fluid, needed for calcium regulation, blood pressure regulation, and ATP. Um, the sources are lean, grapey vegetables, nuts, seeds, legumes, bananas, germs of wheat. Deficiencies are rare. Um, Excessive um, excesses are, and, and problems with that cause from supplements and taking um, too much in supplements and that reviews the magnesium sources. Again, sulfur, um, briefly on that, that is a mineral and it's part of the amino acids and protein and glutathione needed for detoxification. Um, and B vitamins, thiamine, and biotin. Um, it regulates acidity in our blood. There's no RDA for that because we typically receive enough of it in our diet, um, not to, um, to uh, that's why they don't determine an RDA. Um, sources is part of dietary proteins and there's no deficiency. So just really calcium, phosphorus, those are the main two I want you to pay attention to on that. So those, um, now we're moving from um, our, our, from the major minerals to the trace minerals. Remember you need to know the difference. So iron, this is the one that's really important. It's hemoglobin, myoglobin, and the heme and iron. Um, iron absorption, if we don't have enough iron, uh, we become anemic. Um, RDAs, 8 milligrams. Sources are meats, um, green leafies, and, and rich grains. And deficiencies are anemia. Sources of iron, we can see here some beans, but mostly uh, meats, um, legumes, leafy greens, whole and rich grains. So iron deficiency, you can see normal red blood cells versus iron deficient red blood cells. Um, we see this mostly in women who are pregnant, infants, children, and adolescents. Low intake of iron, vegetarian diets, and, and people who chronically diet, and in poverty or in intestinal parasites. You can overdose on iron, so um, it's usually kept away from children. Um, and that's why, just a head up, heads up, gummies don't contain iron. So if you're giving your kids gummies, there's no iron in those because they taste like candy. And it, that is one thing that is regulated by the government is that iron supplements for children um, cannot be in gummies for that reason so that uh, children don't um, consume large doses and die. Copper um, is needed for iron transport, protein enzyme, lipid metabolism. We usually don't see deficiencies unless there's an iron deficiency anemia, but um, excesses usually come from supplements. Zinc, we know a lot of I, a lot of you take zinc. I saw in the, the assignment you turned in. It's involved in um, a lot of enzymatic processes. Um, and stabilization of cell membranes, hormones, acid phase balance, scavenges free radicals, um, and uh, a lot of people take zinc um, because they think that it helps them uh, decrease their um, uh, how long they have um, colds and that sort of thing. Um, but it's usually um, uh, zinc. 
uh, is has to do with mucosal cells and replacing mucosal cells. Um, 